O chosen people, proclaim the mighty works of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Today, Saturday, May 9th, we pray and offer the Mass for Ida Quadra Barnett. And then the 5 p.m. intention for Joseph, Josephine Falcicchio and the intentions for Sunday, uh, May 10th, for Mother's Day, uh, will be celebrated all on Sunday as they are Sunday intentions. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these most sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who in the celebration of Easter graciously give to the world the healing of heavenly remedies, show benevolence to your church that our present observance may benefit us for eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. <clears throat> A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. On the following Sabbath, almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. When the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy and with violent abuse, contradicted what Paul said. Both Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly and said, It was necessary that the word of God be spoken to you first. But since you reject it and condemn yourselves as unworthy of eternal life, we now turn to the Gentiles. For so the Lord has commanded us. I have made you a light to the Gentiles that you may be an instrument of salvation to the ends of the earth. The Gentiles were delighted when they heard this and glorified the word of the Lord. All who were destined for eternal life came to believe, and the word of the Lord continued to spread through the whole region. The Jews, however, incited the women of prominence who were worshippers, and the leading men of the city stirred up the persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them from their territory. So they shook the dust from their feet in protest against them and went to Iconium. The disciples were filled with joy and the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. The Lord has made his salvation known. In the sight of the nations, he has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness toward the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into song, sing praise. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. Alleluia, alleluia. If you remain in my word, you will truly be my disciples, and you will know the truth, says the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on you do not know him and have seen him. Philip said to Jesus, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and, that, and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me, that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you. Whoever believes in me will do the works that I do. 
and will do greater ones than these, because I am going to the Father. And whatever you ask in my name, I will do, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything of me in my name, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we hear Jesus make a fairly bold proclamation to those who are believers in him. Whatever you ask in my name, I will do. Whatever you ask in my name, I will do. Jesus' time on earth, his works, his miracles, his healings, his raising from the dead of, of Lazarus and, and of those who he showed signs to the world, all his signs, all his works that he completed on this earth had two goals in mind. One, so that people may believe in him. He's not going to do a work that isn't going to lead to a greater faith in Jesus. Two, to understand Jesus' relationship with the Father, that he is the Son of God, that he is the one who was sent by God the Father, that he and the Father are one. All his works are with these two aspects, so that people, faith may increase, and so that we can understand who Jesus is as being one with the Father. Why? Because these are the two things that lead to our salvation. And I think it's good to keep that in mind uh, in our prayers, in our supplications, in our petitions uh, to the Lord. The Lord doesn't uh, just heal uh, because uh, he feels bad for somebody and he wants them uh, to get better. Sure, uh, the Lord loves us uh, as a loving Father, um, but we have to put into perspective his work on earth, his miraculous work on earth, in the context of faith and in the context of Jesus' relationship with the Father, because ultimately our prayers, our petitions, our supplications to the Lord are intended to lead us to salvation. That's why the Our Father is the perfect prayer. It's the prayer that Jesus taught us. When we make our petitions to our Father, we say, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, because it's the Father's will that leads us to our salvation. My friends, miracles really do happen. <laughs> the Lord really does uh, answer our prayers. Uh, in my short time as a priest, I've, I've seen uh, some incredible miracles. Um, and without getting into details, I, I remember one time where I saw something happen that somebody was praying for, and it was so miraculous, and I was so taken aback by what happened that I even started to question. I said, this is this, is this a weird coincidence? Is this a real miracle? Does, does, it really, does God really work so directly in people's lives in this way? And I, I got my answer a couple hours later when the person who this miracle happened to called me on the phone and said, Father, the first thing he said, Father, I've never believed so much in my life. I've never had so much faith in my life. I can't wait to go back. And I'm going to start going to church, and, and so on and so forth. And I said, yeah, that's, that's the miracle. That's the miracle. The one that our prayers are answered to lead to greater faith in Jesus, to ultimately lead us to our salvation. And so today, let us not lose our hope in Jesus if, if our prayers are not immediately answered. Uh, but when we do pray, when we do call upon the Lord's name, uh, let us have confidence that whatever we ask in Jesus' name, uh, he will do, remembering that everything that Jesus does is for the sake of our salvation, for us to grow in a deeper relationship with him, and to enter into his relationship with the Father and for our faith in the Son of God, who is the way, the truth, and the life.
united in faith and fortified by our Savior's love for us, let us present our petitions to the Father. We pray for the Pope and all who serve the people of God. May the Lord help them to persevere in defending the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for world leaders. May the God of justice help them in their work of serving their people. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for those who suffer for the sake of the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. For our faith community, that we who worship at God's altar may be transformed for service in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. For our beloved dead, may God welcome them to his heavenly table. Let us pray to the Lord. And for our special petitions that we bring to the altar of God this day, especially for the end of the coronavirus pandemic, let us pray to the Lord. God, our Father, your Son, Jesus, came to give us a share in your life. Hear the prayers we offer today through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, 
We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Paul, our patron, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. Let us offer one another the sign of God's peace. Peace be with all of you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Tomorrow morning, uh, Father Thomas will have the Mass, uh, so I'll just take this opportunity to wish a very happy and blessed Mother's Day to all mothers. Um, 
I know you might not be able to gather maybe with, with all your family. Um, so it's going to be a, a, a tough uh, Mother's Day uh, this year. Um, but know that uh, we're close to you, all mothers, uh, spiritually uh, and in heart. Uh, and we will continue uh, to pray for you and, and to be near you. Uh, and a big thank you to all the mothers uh, who are watching for uh, all that you do, all the sacrifices you do. Uh, we all know that uh, being a mother can often be a, a thankless job. Um, but uh, thanks be to God for, for our mothers uh, that, that he has graced us with. And so we pray for you, we're there with you, um, and may God's blessing uh, be upon you uh, this Mother's Day. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. And let us turn to Our Lady as we've been doing uh, throughout this entire uh, time of crisis, and let us ask for her uh, intercession and protection, uh, our Heavenly Mother. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thine intercession is left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin of Virgins, my Mother. To thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy 